and welcome to my channel a platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays so be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I post any videos okay so in this video I'm gonna be teaching you how to round off accurately uh, in an examination so you don't lose any unnecessary marks all right so let's jump right in <laughs> So in this lesson, we are going to be looking at rounding off. Now I know that this is not a section that a lot of you really struggle with. However, I do find that there are certain places where a lot of students lose marks unnecessarily because they don't really do this part properly. Okay, so what we're going to look at in this uh, video is really just how to round large values, like really big values, how to round those off. And then also how to round off to the context of the question, which is how they ask you, uh, which is how they sort of ask you to answer the questions in an exam. Okay, so let's look at that. So rounding off large values, um, in order for me to teach this to you, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to take one value, I'm, I'm going to round it off to different, in different ways. So we are going to first start with looking at taking the number and seeing how do we round this number off to the nearest unit. Okay, so this number is 8,651,105.75. Okay, so if I'm going to round this off to the nearest unit, that just simply means to the nearest whole number, which means I shouldn't have any decimals. Okay, so the way you will do that is you will draw the line to where you actually want to round off to. Right, so we don't want any decimals, so that's where we will draw our line. The value after the line, if this value is 5 or greater, then the number in front of the line will go up 1. Okay, if this value is less than 5, then that means that the number will remain the same. So in this case, 7 is greater than 5, so when I round this value off, I will round it off to 8,651,106 because the 7 um rounded change the five to a six okay so that's simple pretty easy nearest unit is actually just getting rid of the decimals now the second one is rounding off to the nearest hundred now the way i teach my students is i always say say the number and when you say the word in the number to where they want you to round off that's where you're going to draw your line so let me show you what i mean so in this case, I'm going to say this number, this number, which is 8,651,100. So do you see after the second one, I say 100 and that's where they want me to round it off to. So that's where I will draw my line. Okay, then the value after that will then determine is this number going up or down in front of the line. So in this case, 0 is less than 5, so the number will remain the same. Sorry, I didn't mean down, I mean it remains the same. Okay, so if I look there, the second one, that means I will then round it off to leave that value in front of the line to a 1, but then I will fill the rest of the placeholders before the decimals, so that there's no decimals actually in this question, before that with zeros. Okay, so rounding this number off to the nearest hundred would be 800, 800 8,651,100. Okay, now I'm going to use the same technique and round off to the nearest thousand. So again, taking the same number and let me say it. So when I say this number, I say 8,651,000. So after the first one, is where I say the word thousand and that's where I'm going to draw my line and that means that after that I'm going to look at that value and that value is less than five so that means that the one in front of the line will remain the same and then I just fill the rest of the placeholders with zero and that's what my answer would look like eight six five one and three zeros okay so I think you're getting the gist of this if I go to the nearest million now Again, same number. How do I say this number? I say 8 million. I don't even have to say the rest of the number because I've said million and that's where then I'm going to draw my line. The number after this is 
greater than 5, which means that the 8 will go, would move up to a 9, and then all the rest of the placeholders I will then fill with zeros. Okay, so that's how you would round off larger values if they ask you to do so. Okay, now the next section we're going to look at is rounding off to the context of the question. So this is what they basically ask you in the instructions. They don't ask you anymore to round off to two decimal places. They ask you to look at the context of the question. In other words, what's the story of the question? And then round off according to the story. Okay? So the first story example I'm going to give you is context one where we're just looking at money. Now, whenever we're working with money, you always round off to two decimal places because in the real world context, whenever we round off, we round off to two two decimals, okay? So a simple example, and this is really just to show you how I would do the rounding off. So I would take 1,000 and divide it by 11 people. So if I take 1,000 divided by 11 people, then that means that each person will get 90 rand, 0.9090991, okay? So if I'm going to round this off, two decimal places, that means I'm going to draw my line after the second decimal, the value after that is greater than five, so it moves up one. So in this case, my answer would be each person would then get 90 rand and 91 cents. Okay, so that's how we work with money. We always round off to two decimal places. Now let's look at context number two. So in context number two, I have one liter of paint that covers 15 meters squared, right? So 15 meters squared represents the area, and one liter of paint can then paint that size area, so 15 meters squared. So the question asks, so how many liters should be bought to cover 124.5 meters squared? Okay, so obviously if I look at this question, the area they want me to cover is 124.5, which is bigger than the 15. So I already know that my answer needs to be more than one liter. Okay, so the method that I use for this, um, you'll see I use throughout all of my videos, just because it's very simple and it's very easy. It makes these kind of questions easy to answer. But the way I would do it is I would start by saying, and there's many ways to do it, if you understand or prefer your teacher's method, I'm by all means do this. Um, the focus in this question especially is not really the method, it's just how to round off the answer, but I'm just going to show you how I would, how I do these calculations. So I always start by saying what is given, one liter is given and it covers 15 meters squared, right? So they want to know 124.5 meters, that's also what's given, how much paint is going to cover that. So the 124.5 is also area. So I'm going to place that under the same value, um, under the same sort of value that has the same unit. So 15 is in meters squared and 124.5 is in meters squared. So I'll place this underneath each other. So the method always says you always work anti-clockwise, divide first and then multiply. So I'm going to take the 124.5, divide it by 15, multiplied by 1, and the answer will be 8.3 liters. So what does this answer mean? This answer means that if I want to paint 124.5 meters squared, I need 8.3 liters, okay? However, I can't go to the shop and buy 8.3 liters. They only sell the liters in whole numbers. So I need to find out how many liters do I actually need right? Now, do you agree with me that if I only buy eight, so if I rounded this off using the methods in the previous slide and with money, I would then round this off to eight liters, right? To the nearest unit. However, in this context, eight liters is not going to be enough because we need 8.3 liters. So if I'm going to go to the shop, I need to buy nine liters. Okay, so that's how I take the context into consideration when I'm rounding off. Now, let's show you another context, a last context. So this question says a factory makes an average of 249 cars in one month. How many cars do they make per day, right? So this is a simple one. You again would say 249 cars is how much they make in total for the month and divided by the average amount of days in a month, which is 30 and your answer is 8.3.
Now, do you see that this answer is exactly the same answer that you get in context two, but just watch how we round it off differently here. I have 8.3, right? But the question wants to know how many cars um, gets made per day. So that means whole cars, not part of a car, okay? So if I look in this case, how many cars would actually then be made? Would be eight. Because this, the, the ninth car is not complete yet. So that means in the context of this question, the 8.3 then gets rounded down to eight cars. Okay, so if you look at context two and context three, exactly the same answer of 8.3, but because of the context, we then round it off differently. Okay, so really in this video, I just want you to remember that when you're rounding off larger numbers, okay, say the number and use the line and circle method. When you're working with money, round off to two decimal places. And then for all of the questions in your exams, always look at the context and what is the story of the question, and then make sure that you round off your answer correctly according to that story. Okay, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope that you are able to easily round off all your answers accurately in your next test and in your next exam. Thank you. Bye. So that's that video. I hope this really helped you. If you liked it, would you please give it a thumbs up? And if you have any suggestions or any other videos you'd like me to make, please add it in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.